Let's take a quick look at events here. There's a couple of points I want to make about these to help you in your endeavors with our friends, contractors out in the wild. So this here is a box vent, AKA a turtle vent. This right here is the only thing that's lighter gauge metal than this is tin foil. Okay, this stuff, you can take your finger, your pinky finger, and if you've never gone outside and you have zero calluses on your hands and you can poke your finger right into that, the metal right in the middle of that uh, vent and create a huge dent that's bigger than any of those little pings on there, right? Same thing with one of these. This is maybe slightly sturdier, same deal. Important thing to notice here, um, and it's not totally fair to say this, but I'm looking at this, I see a bunch of dings, but I don't see any hits anywhere else on this on this roof, right? I should tell you that this material is a lot softer, right, than shingles. It's gonna get damaged. The point is, is this is gonna get damaged long before the shingles will, okay? This here is a plastic turtle vent with holes all the way through it. Um, they may or may not have a leak upstairs. This is so close to the ridge that the only water that's going to get in is going to be, you know, whatever raindrops fall straight down into that hole, which is so even in a like really heavy storm, it's not as many as you think. It's probably not enough to cause a leak, um, but they absolutely need to get that fixed because they want to keep bugs and birds and critters out of there too as well, right? Plus it's it will eventually cause problems, right? This one's not a great photo, but that looks like some really juicy hail damage to me. They can bellyache about this all they want to, all this stuff. This all can be here, but if I don't see any bruises on the shingles, I can't total the roof. This is one thing that just drove me absolutely up the wall. Well, how can you say? I mean, how can you say? How can you say? Dude, if you can show me a bruise on this shingle, then we're in business, right? We could talk about it. But I, I'm not total on the roof just because there's a bunch of damage, but just because there's a bunch of dinged vents. I don't care. You can you can get up on a roof and it look like somebody sat on all the vents, right? And they're just smashed flat. No damage to the shingles. Can't buy it, right? This is me. I what what can I do? There's nothing else I can do. I'm not gonna argue with you. I mean, maybe I'll argue a little bit because sometimes it's fun. You fall back on, hey, listen, you know. I want to buy this roof as much as you you want to you want it to get bought, but I gotta I have to be able to justify it. I'm not the one who's writing the checks, and if I don't show them a picture of something that I've you know have assessed as a hail impact on the shingles, f the vents, then I can't do it right. The, even if I said that there was, I totaled this roof just for these these these. This is the the thing the final thing that made him go well, okay fine, most of the time. If I turn this in and said. Look at all these vents. The roofer, he's, an, he's a hail expert. He knows everything. But look at these vents. This roof is totaled. And I write an estimate to total this roof out. And I tell the homeowner, your roof is totaled. And you're going to get a check in the mail, blah, blah, blah. The insurance company might say, if they QA it, or somebody's going to see it, especially if you're new and you do this, they might say, you need to call that homeowner back and tell them, sorry, we're just going to repair those vents because, you know, you didn't you showed zero evidence that there's any damage to these shingles so i tell the i tell the contractor say listen you know i could try and turn this in but they're not going to pay it so we will have accomplished nothing right sorry there's nothing i can do about it this is a turbine vent again very very light gauge model you can grab the sides of this thing and push your hands together and squash it into a pancake this is a aluminum power vent cover with dents on it here's a plastic power vent cover Again, cover, not just the whole thing, but the cover only. You can replace just the cover. Um, this is super, I mean, it, this is probably, I want to tell you guys something, and this is maybe getting a, a be on my skis a little bit. There is only one company that provides E&O and general liability insurance solely to the insurance industry, and that's Kaplik. They even have drone and cyber coverages. Download the free guide all about the different kinds of insurance that you as the adjuster should carry at cplic.net slash adjuster TV. But the, I, the notion that plastic lasts forever if you just like throw it in a landfill or it ends up in the ocean or out in the in the, the gutter on the side of the road, I think is baloney. Um, and the reason why I say that, not because of any like 
political or anything, but because of this. <laughs> when I see this, that's plastic, right? It's, it's designed and made to be outside all the time. And it, you could walk up to that thing and grab the edge of it and break off those pieces right there. And it just, it would crumble in your hand. The number of treks, and I'm sorry if you've got one of these, but those treks, it's basically plastic, composite plastic decking for like your backyard deck um, that I've seen that were 10, 15, 20 years old that were doing this, falling apart, crumbling into like just basically dust. Uh, is anyone that's that's old, especially if it's exposed to the sun, um, it happens too. I don't know how, they, they can't make things that will last outside. Let's just put it that way, okay? Otherwise, we would never have to replace roofs or, or siding or whatever, right? To make stuff that would last outside. It just can't stand up to it. There's very few, besides concrete or stone, right? Or brick, stuff just doesn't last, right? This is This is plastic, brand new. I mean, it's probably not very thick to begin with, but... You know, you probably really have to beat on this thing to break it. Now, if you grab it, the hail is, you know, there's not, a, I'm, a, I'm seeing some spattering on these shingles, but I'm not seeing really any significant hail impacts on there. That's not very big hail, it's doing that, it's wrecked. One thing I wanted to touch on, uh, kind of moving along here, what do you notice about this vent, All right? It's got dents on it, but what else have we got going on here? Well. We have some dirt in the vent, in the dents, right? That tells me that this has been, those dents are old, whatever they're from. And they, they may or may not be from hail. They could be from any number of things, right? Um, I don't see any spattering over here on this algae, which takes a little bit of time to grow, but not that much time, right? So you've got this black stuff in here. It's probably a combination of dirt. It might even be more algae growing in there, right? This is why, uh, here's another one, right? So in this case, you can see that there is dents that had little, have little rings in them, right? And kind of a discoloration. That had, had water sitting in it for a period of time, right? There's a little bit of dust in the bottom of that one. But you can kind of see that there's some little fresher spots, some little brighter metal spots that are kind of like more visible, right? That's fresh. That's recent. Okay. This is a... a a phenomenon known as spattering, where stuff that sits around outside, siding, right? Same thing, metal site. It happens to metal and plastic. It happens to painted surfaces. <clears throat> Probably happens to like bare wood as well. Um, it's just harder to see. But you can see these like little darker kind of splash spots, right? It, and obviously they're associated with some, with some dents, which tells me that this was some pretty good sized hail um that came down and made a splash mark some of them made a dent some of them didn't right the hail is coming down and just like with the algae it's knocking that oxidation off of the metal the, the like this right there's no dents on this this is probably this might be a car or like an air conditioner or something um this is a spatter mark right it's knocking that stuff off of there, the oxi the, whatever that little oxidation is. And you could take your finger, this is, this is something that I did often, um, kind of run your finger on the side of your nose to get a little bit of nose grease. And if you rub your finger on the vent or the fascia or the siding or whatever, because start, they start arguing with you about, well, how can you say? Well, I can, I can remove that stuff with just my finger. Lick your finger and do this, right? Um, and I basically say it just made a little clean spot on the side of the house right you know homeowner can get out here with some probably a pressure washer or like some mild detergent or whatever and, and clean the siding right it probably has other stuff growing on it as well right it's not damaged unless that metal is dented you know or some somehow messed up right or broken like the plastic vents right my big um big big pet peeve and this is one of the reasons why I encourage you not to do this. I never tell you to use chalk. How do you see the spattering on that, right? When there's chalk all over it. Yeah, I, you know, this indicates to me that there's definitely dents, but if there were spatter marks on there, how am I gonna be able to tell the difference between the old ones and the new ones? I can't now because you've just covered that whole vent 
with chalk to show me something that I could see just as easily as you with my bare eyes. How, how am I going to be able to tell if that's fresh or not? I can't. Right. Thanks, pal. This is, I, I want to see this and I want to see a dent in it. If I talk to the contractor before he goes to the house, before I get there, which I, I want those guys there. I want them there. You want to have the contractor there, especially if you're doing the full thing and you're writing the estimates and everything and you're able to make the coverage call. I want that guy there. But like, hey man, don't worry about chalking things up. We'll just get up there. We'll just get out there and look at it together. Okay. We don't need to, please don't chalk stuff up because it makes it harder to see the spattering and to be able to tell what's new and old, right? What's fresh and what's not fresh. Because you are, as a, as a catastrophe adjuster, you are authorized for that date of loss, right? June 5th. That's your date of loss. Anything that happens outside of that is somebody else's claim, right? It's a total aside, but don't go to a house and like look for other things that you can make the insured file a claim for. Because for a number of reasons, not the least of which is, you know, if they, if they probably won't give it to you, they'd probably be annoyed that you're doing that because you're wasting everybody's time. Uh, but also the insurance going to get hit with other deductibles, right? And they may not care about it. They may not want to do it. Main reason why I don't like to do that is because I, it's, I find it to be a complete and total waste of time. Okay, now that you know what hail damage looks like to soft metal, let's take a look at some real hail damage to composition shingles in the next vid.